In this project, I try to build a smart home IoT smoke detector that really can run on batteries for a significant amount of time. Most projects that I've seen around are using a standard smoke detector and a separate Arduino or ESP8266 based solution with external power supply that simply gets a signal from the smoke detector and puts it onto the internet. That's not bad, but not the real challenge. The real challenge is to hack such a device that it can really run on the standard battery for months or even years without need for a permanent power supply. And this is the idea. If you look into the standard smoke detectors you can buy for less than 10 euros or dollars everywhere, then you will get about this technology. You get a 9 volt battery powered circuit with the detector, with the horn or the beeper, and uh, of course uh, it's based on an integrated circuit. This integrated circuit is typically the MC145010 or CS2105GO M12 or something like that. All of these chips are more or less compatible and have the same pinout. And especially they have a pin 7 which is normally left open in the cheap uh, smoke detectors. But if you look into the data sheet you will see that this pin is uh, named as IO input output. It uh, puts high uh, as soon as smoke is detected and the, uh, um, the horn goes off. And it is meant to be as an indicator for external logic for the alert, uh, alert situation. And the idea is to use this signal to power up an ESP8266 and send out some MQTT messages. With uh, this schematic here, you use the signal, you feed it into a transistor, as soon as it gets high, it uh, switches, and here the AMS1117 uh, uh, voltage reg uh, regulator transforms the 9 volt from the battery into 3.3 volts that can go directly into an ESP and powers up the ESP as soon as the alarm goes off here. As long as there's no alert, this uh, transistor blocks and there is no effective current flow um, if the uh, I.O. pin is left open. Here we have the smoke detector connected to a uh, current meter and uh, at the moment we have milliamps. I switch even down to microamps and you see in normal operation the complete ESP circuit doesn't draw any current at all. It's 0.0, .0 microamps. I go back to milliamps and now we'll show what happens when I force an alert. I press the test button here to force an alert. It starts here, it powers up. The ESP powers up. It sends the MQTT messages and it draws about 70 milliampers during normal operation. As soon as the alert is over, it's back to zero again and the home automation system has received the alarm via an MQTT message. The program is rather simple. It's a basic MQTT publisher. It gets the MQTT uh, address of the uh, broker, username, password for the network, and a static IP uh, setup IP address uh, for a faster connection so that it doesn't have to wait for DHCP. And the rest of the program is rather straightforward. It waits for the connection to the network, connects to the broker, and send ten, sends 10 times a second the MQTT message with the smoke detection. 
so it just has to start up and send out as fast as possible because it's probably only a few seconds activated. A home automation system may catch this message. In my case it's code red. Uh, you can find rather good tutorials here on YouTube on this system from IBM. And it takes a message, it checks the alarm condition and it opens a box and it plays an alert signal in the browser. Of course you can do many other things as well. Now we have it all together and now I show you a real alarm. I mean, I start the test button And the message pops up. It has been recognized by the home automation system. The whole thing runs on a battery, 9 volts. And the normal function of the smoke detector, the normal alert still works. It's just a small add-on, small and cheap add-on.